Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to show you my round six game, uh, which came after two losses, uh, and I had the white pieces. Uh, I I don't want to talk about my mental state anymore. I feel like I'm whining, and I am. Uh, but yeah, I, I didn't feel well, uh, and I didn't feel like playing chess. But still, I decided to play on. I started d4, and after f5. I, I almost played e4, uh, the stone ton. Uh, that's something I've been preparing for a while. But I thought, okay, let's let's have a slower game. Let's play what I know so that I don't have to think too much. I played bishop f4 in the end. For those of you who keep saying uh, you are playing the London again, yes, I am. I just... Uh, well, even though I had a great score with d4, c4, whenever uh, I'm not feeling perfectly well. I want to play something simple and this is what I find most enjoyable, so I do it. Okay, knight f6, e3, e6, knight f3, all very standard. Uh, bishop d3 can also be played, but I played bishop e2 because that's a setup I like. In many positions it plays against knight h5, castles, and now h3, uh, d6, castles, b6. Okay, uh, here playing in, in a standard London fashion with c3 is inferior, so in the end you could say this isn't a London system, but I, I'm, I'm not really sure to be honest. Here he played knight e4 and I had a big thing. Uh, I knew that knight e4 is, is a move in these types of positions, but uh, challenging the e4 square so early, I, I didn't think could be good for him, and it, it's not bad, the position should be just slightly better for white, but uh, there's a way for me to try and challenge this knight. It involves peace trades, but if I don't do anything, for example, if I don't do anything for three moves and he plays bishop b7, knight d7, knight df6, then he has a great positional bind on the position and he can just play g5 unhindered and king h8 and rook g8. So I played knight f to d2. I don't want my pawns to be doubled uh, and I want to be able to play bishop f3. He took knight d2 and I played knight d2. Okay, bishop b7, bishop f3. This is the point. I need to challenge the long diagonal and weaken the light squares. So he takes, I take. Okay, he played knight d7 here, uh, I played rook a to d1. This plays against the typical pawn break of e5. So if e5 is played now, I can just take it uh, and retreat the bishop eventually. This knight is either going to have to move and give up the e5 pawn, or the pawn is going to have to advance to, to e4, which is going to mean that I have dark squares as well, uh, and this should be great for me, I think. So after rook d1, he played g5, which I've expected. Bishop to h2 and queen e8. This is a standard Dutch procedure of just moving the pieces towards the king side. I would like you to have a think in this position. Uh, try to find the plan. Th there are two sensible plans in this position, which are of a positional nature and what I did isn't a plan at all, it's just a blunder because I'd miscalculated the variation. Uh, I, I went into a long forcing line, not forcing, but semi-forcing, which is uncalled for in this position. Okay, so pause the video, have a, have a think, find the find plan. Okay, uh, uh, the simplest plan is to attack and blockade the pawn on c7. So you play queen b7. This is the simplest idea. Uh, of course, if the queen should retreat to c8 or to or to d8, you've achieved something. For example, queen c8, queen c6. Okay. Now the pawn is blockaded, and after, for example, knight f6, you can just continue rook f1, and you have control over e4. Uh, there is indirect pressure on e6 and on d6, and in many positions, I, I will be able to play either c5 or d5 or e4. So this is the simplest plan. After queen b7, if he tries c5, uh, just getting rid of his weak pawn, then d6 becomes weak. And now it's the plan is sort of easy. You just go knight b1 to c3, and if cd4, then rook d4. 
pressure on d6. If knight c5, simply queen f3, and something has to be done about d6. Obviously, knight c3 is coming, rook f1, knight b5, and the, the pawn is going to have to advance eventually. So that was the simplest plan. I have to be honest, I didn't think of that at all. What I had thought of is knight b1 straight away, and after knight f6, simply knight c3, improving my pieces. e5 has been prevented. Uh, I am threatening d5 now and trying to weaken the, the f5 square. So that's I, what I think the, the, most, the most human plan and also the most sensible one. I think the idea with queen b7 isn't that easy to see because you're not winning the pawn, uh, you're just blockading it. What I did is horrendous. Uh, after my next move, not only am I losing my advantage, but I should be losing by force if black plays correctly all the way through. Obviously, black's plan is a kingside attack, and I'm going into that. Uh, I played e4. This is just a dreadful move. I don't remember uh, going into someone's idea just like that ever in a game. Uh, of course, if, if he takes, then I have no issues, and I should have... A very strong if not winning position because this is not easy to defend if for example bishop to f6 i can simply continue knight b1 to c3 and then do something like this i can also play uh, rook f1 straight away that's also good but after e4 of course he doesn't take he doesn't allow me to take he plays f4 which i was calculating and now uh, the follow-up to my blunder of e4 and why e4 is a bad move is because my next move simply doesn't work. Queen g4. My idea was, well, he has to play queen g6. There are no other moves, uh, basically. Uh, if, uh, well, what, is, what else to suggest? Rook f6 fails to queen g5. Uh, bishop f6, I think, fails to d5. Or maybe not. Maybe I can just go knight f3. No, wait. What was I thinking after bishop f6? Ah, after bishop f6, I can just take on, on, on f4. Sorry. That's the point. Uh, and h5 doesn't work because queen, queen g3, h4, queen, queen g4. So he has to play queen g6. Okay. And this is all, in my mind, forced during the game. I play d5. Double pressure on the pawn. The pawn is pinned. And he has to play knight c5. So everything what I thought would happen, happened. I go b4. Now, of course, if he retreats the knight straight away, I can just win the pawn on e6. So he throws in h5. I go queen e2. And now again, if he uh, should play knight d7, for example, uh, then I can just take because it's with tempo. And after queen takes, I take on h5. But he plays knight a4. And this is what I'd missed. I'd missed that he's forking my, my queen and rook. And after this, I'm dead lost. Uh, there is nothing I can do. Again, had he played knight d7, which I'd expected, I can, I can just take. And I think this should be game over. Uh, he weakened himself too much. And... I can even play it slowly with f3, king h1, bishop g1, bishop d4, or I can just play knight f3 and go straight in. But after knight a4, that doesn't work. Uh, I made matters worse from here on. I played knight b1, the idea was to trap the knight, but he always has a5. So if he does nothing here, if he goes g4, for example, <clears throat> I can take, he takes, and I think I have to play g3 here. I could be lost, but at least I have queen c2. Uh, but he played a5, uh, and I played a3. And now, of course, queen c2 doesn't work because he can just take uh, g4. And in this position, uh, I'm losing. After my next move, I'm losing easily. Uh, I ended up playing g3. It's not easy to find the move. f3 fails to, to g3, of course, so closing down the position doesn't work. 
Opening up the H file doesn't work because he takes takes and I, he's just threatening G3. Again, F3 fails. Again, G3 doesn't work here because the H file is open. If I go G3, he goes F3. I move my queen and he plays queen H5 and eventually this is going to be mate. If I try king h1, rook g1, he goes king g7 and rook h8. What I should have done is taking on e6 and this is the engine line. I didn't even consider taking on e6 because he plays f3, I go queen c2, he goes gh3 and I go g3. This seemed suicidal to me. It's much better than what I did but I couldn't see it. What I, do, what I did, in my mind, just killed my bishop. So g3, f3, my bishop is dead. Queen c2. Takes, takes. Okay, and in this position he played e5. I went knight to d2. And what I should have done at this point and at several other points in the next couple of moves is I should have played h4 because he's threatening to win by force, which I didn't see. I thought h4 doesn't work. Uh, I went knight d2 and I'm going to turn on the engine for this just to show you the evaluation. The engine says minus 3 after h4. So my calculation was king h1 always. h4 is always met with king h1 in my mind. So he takes, I take with the pawn and I couldn't see the follow-up. I couldn't see what he does here. Now it's still not clear to me but the idea is he wants to eliminate the knight, play f2 at some point and then start an attack. Let's play a more human move, like queen h6 and then h4 and then here. This should be completely winning. I just couldn't see why or how during the game. And at least now my bishop is open. So I, I couldn't see it. So I didn't close the position down. Here he played bishop g5. Again, h4 is, according to the engine, forced. Uh, Instead of bishop g5, he should have played h4. Since he played bishop g5, I should have played it myself. I went knight b3. And again, h4. Now it's even worse. Now it is a forced win, and now I do understand it. So again, king h1, hg3, fg3. Now f2. And after rook f2, rook f2, queen f2, queen e4, king g... Okay, no... Uh, King g1 doesn't work because of bishop e3, so, so queen to g2, and now queen takes c4. And my position is collapsing. Uh, I, I'm just done. And the same pattern is going to work for the next couple of moves, because I still didn't play h4. He went bishop e7, I went rook a1, targeting the knight. He went queen e8. Uh, again, h4, same pattern. I went knight c1, again h4. Same pattern. Queen d7 played. Knight d3 played. Now it doesn't work as much. He played rook a7. I played rook a3. He played rook a8. Uh, rook fa1 and b5. And now I got something in the position. Cb, knight b6 and rook a5. Now, I actually wasn't sure I was losing. Uh, I actually thought I had a pretty good position because... He is a piece down, same as me. This knight isn't going anywhere. If the knight tries to move away to c8, uh, you first have to move the rook away. If you move the rook away, I have rook a7 and, and rook c1. He played bishop g5 and now I did close the position down. Bishop h6. Now, if you turn on the engine, and I would invite you to have a look at this position with the engine because it's completely mind-boggling. The engine gives a plus one advantage to white. The engine says white should win this with precise play. And I, I had no idea I could win it. I, I thought I had a comfortable position. I thought I should be slightly worse, but I can hold. Probably I can hold. I'm a piece down, but I don't see how he gets his knight out. I played knight b2, which is a blunder. Knight b2 is just a blunder, because there's a tactical pattern I was aware of. Queen takes b5, but I thought it didn't work here. Let me show you why it does work. If queen b5, rook b5, rook a1, the point, and knight d1, the defense I was counting on, fails to knight c4. The idea is fairly simple. 
you just want to go rook a8. So what's my defense? Or firstly, you're threatening knight b2. Uh, I have to go rook a5. There, there, there are no other moves. So takes, takes, and now rook b8. And I resign because it's mate. So knight b2 fails to queen b5, which I didn't see. He didn't play it, he played rook fc8. And now I went queen d3. Now, of course, I'm, I'm defending the pawn. I didn't defend it because I thought the tactic wins. I defended it because I didn't want to deal with the fact that the tactic existed. Uh, an interesting attempt in, in my mind was bishop c1 here, but he played queen e8. I went queen a3. Uh, again, the, the same tactic doesn't work now because everything is lined up. Uh, he went bishop to d2, queen b3. I, I was happy to get a draw at this point. I just thought that I could be slightly worse, but I have a comfortable position. So here we actually did draw. He played king h8, I played rook a2, king g8, rook a1, king h8, draw. He offered the draw. Now I had eight minutes on the clock. He had, I don't remember how much, but I, I, but I would say half an hour, maybe slightly less, but he had more time than me. Uh, uh, let's, let's talk about this position. So I'm a piece down. For the moment, he's a piece down as well. Uh, however, he has two weaknesses. I have zero. One of his weaknesses I can never target. That's the weakness on h5. That being said, if I win h5 somehow, uh, then I should be able to free up my bishop and win the game. But for as long as this bishop remains on the diagonal, there is no way to do that. His other weakness is actually easy to target. So the first thing I should do is improve my king. Uh, and I had a long think about this position because when I saw that the engine thinks white is better, I tried to find a winning plan. So. Pause the video here and try to find the winning plan for white, and then I'm going to show you what I came up with. Okay, so the first thing is, let's improve our king. Uh, I don't know what to suggest for, for black, because I don't see a way for black to improve the position. One way to do it... Uh, well, there actually is no way to do it. I don't think so. Let me just check knight to d7, because this was interesting. Yeah, if knight e7, I think I can just easily pile on the pressure. The engine says this is actually a bad move and that white should be even more winning now, but I didn't check this with the engine or analyze it myself. I just thought it couldn't work because I can go knight to, to c4. And if I can achieve this, then I thought... Well, I, I just thought this wouldn't work. Knight c4 doesn't work because of rook a8. And I'm threatening to win the pawn on h5 in many positions now. So, yeah, th this shouldn't be good. Okay, I, I'm sorry for not checking this before. I just remembered it. So I, I don't think that works. So let's say queen d7, which does nothing, I know. And then bishop g1. This is the first part of my plan. Rook f8, black does nothing. Because in my mind, black couldn't do anything. Uh, and then rook to a3. And my idea is fairly simple. I want to go rook c3 at some point uh, and then I want to target the pawn on c7. Let's say king g8. Well, okay, that, that's a bad move. Let, let's start defending the pawn. Let, let's just go rook a b8. Rook c3, let's say rook b7. Let's say queen c2. Okay, rook uh, f to b8. The pawn doesn't have to be de defended yet. Okay, rook c6, for example. Uh, no, uh, yeah, okay. Or rook a6. No, no, it loses the pawn for now. I have to play rook c6 first. Rook c6, I don't know. Let's just move the queen around. King h2. Black can try tricks with bishop f4 or bishop g5, but they don't work because I don't have to take. I don't know. Rook a3, I'll try to pile up this way. Bishop g5. Maybe rook c3. If I take the bishop, I lose by force. This is easy to calculate. Uh, I don't know what to suggest here. Let's say g6 just to show you the mate. So hg3, king g3, and queen h3 mate. So I can never take the bishop, but I, I don't have to take the bishop. 
can go here. The problem is that he can defend everything, and I just couldn't see a way to win. Uh, if black does nothing, let's say king g8, then rook c3, rook fc8, rook c6, rook a b8, rook a7, then I do win. Okay, then it's easy. If rook a8 here, then just rook b7, and I just win the pawn. Uh, but I thought he could defend. And I tried looking for a better winning idea, but I just couldn't find it. And... I don't think there's a way to win. The engine says plus one, but if you can find a winning idea, go for it. I agreed to a draw, and after he offered it, I said, why? What? Why? I still thought he had easier winning chances. Of course, if he can free up his knight, then, he, then that's true, but it's not easy to do. In any case, uh, not a good game, obviously. Uh, it was in line with the middle part of the tournament and my mind state. But I, again, I'm not uh, giving you excuses. I just know why I played poorly. I didn't care enough. Uh, and again, this is the first time that's happened. It was new to me and I hope it never happens again. I still have to show you these games. I wish I didn't have to. But yeah, I promised to do it, so I keep doing it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.